Well, hello and welcome back. So in this session, I'm actually going to set up a virtual machine for Azure Site Recovery between an on-premises Hyper-V server and Azure. The first thing I want to do is show you the workload we're going to move. So I've named it TS2 underscore workload one. And when I look at the settings, I want to go through these settings with you. I have startup memory at half a gig. I have minimum and maximum set at half a gig to two gig. I'm enabling dynamic memory. Even though Azure doesn't use it, you can still use dynamic memory on premises and Azure will take care of that. Two virtual processors and then my hard drives. So I've created these dynamically expanding hard drives. Azure Site Recovery takes care of that when it does the site recovery because right now Azure doesn't support dynamically expanding hard drives. I also have two hard drives here, the boot drive and then a data drive and my data drive is a SCSI drive. We'll let Azure deal with that as well. So those are my settings and then the virtual machine is up and running. So I'll show you from the virtual machine's perspective. Here's my boot drive and then my E drive, that additional one terabyte drive and I put a file in it just so that we know it makes it. So I'll close that. I'll go back to my management console. So again, this is my site recovery vault. I can move into it and we've gone through this checklist. What I'm going to do is move into protected items and the protection group. This is a protection group we created earlier and now I'm going to add the virtual machine. What I really like is because we've already put the agent on the Hyper-V host and the agent synchronizes with our recovery vault, it knows what virtual machines are on that Hyper-V host. So we'll pick our virtual machine and then it'll ask us for the operating system, Windows or Linux, we'll choose Windows, and then the operating system disk. Because we have more than one virtual hard drive, it wants to make sure it gets the right one as the boot OS. So we'll identify that here. Check the mark. And it's actually starting the protection of this virtual machine. And it takes a few minutes. We can go back here and look at jobs and drill into this most recent job. So this most recent job, it's gone through the prerequisites and it confirmed that this virtual machine will work for us. Now it's identifying the target and it'll go through that process. Like you would expect, this is going to take some time. So what I'm going to do is let this work and come back to you after replication has completed. Okay, and now we're back. And as you can see, this workload is now protected. So a number of hours transpired. What I actually did was started this in the evening and came back the next morning and it was done. I typically try to do my uploads at night, better bandwidth, things like that. But let me show you a few of the things we find now. Now that the machine is replicated, I have the opportunity to change the name if need be. There was an issue with the name, so apparently Azure doesn't like underscores. But the great thing is, and I'll show you in the, in the job in a few minutes, um, just got a, a notice that you need to change the name in Azure and the cool part is is you can do that without issue. I can then map it to a network. So for failover I want to map it to my site to site virtual network because it doesn't matter really where this virtual machine is it needs to be contributing to my network and as we saw when we built the site to site I have workloads sitting in Azure, I have workloads sitting on premises. This gives me the ability to actually move the workload from on-premises to Azure or back. This isn't what it's intended for, but kind of a nice side effect. It shows the storage account here, everything else mapped. So I can click Save here and make these changes to my virtual machine. While that's working, I want to move back and show you some of the job results. So moving over to jobs, the first one I want to show you is when we enabled protection. So when we enabled protection, we got a warning here identifying the replication target. And in error details, this is where it tells us the name used for creating the virtual machine in Azure at the time of failover contains unsupported characters. I assume that's the underscore. When I changed the name in Azure, there wasn't an issue. So just be aware, sometimes you might have to make a minor name change. But the other thing in this job rundown is this gives us the details of what happened enabling the job and as you can see I started this about 7:40 p.m. when I move back to the next job now this says that it completed the initial replication at 6:08 a.m. this morning I'm kind of surprised it took that long but the reality is it did and that's why we did it overnight the other great thing is the virtual machine can keep running while you're doing that initial replica because we checkpoint those virtual hard drives and so from the end user perspective, it really doesn't matter. The server is still there. It's still delivering. We just checkpoint the hard drive, send the initial hard drive up, then checkpoint the checkpoint, send that delta up, and 
slowly get those deltas smaller until finally we've got full replication. The same kind of idea as Hyper-V replica. Our destination just happens to be Azure now. So what I wanted to share with you is is how we set this up and we now have this virtual machine set up in Azure in the TS2 protection group. In my next video I'll talk about setting up test failover and failover scenarios. But until then I wish you well.